everyone. I'm Mel Rosen. I'm an assistant professor at the philosophy department at Trent. So now I'm going to talk about some philosophy writing tips that might be helpful to you um, if you were to write um, a longer essay, um, a short writing assignment, um, or writing in philosophy in general. So hopefully these tips will be helpful for you uh, when you do your writing assessments. Okay. So what should you be doing and what will markers be looking at when they look at your writing in philosophy? The things you want to do, and most rubrics are going to have something like this in them. So you want to show that you, believe it or not, understand the topic. Surprise, surprise. So of course, understanding is probably the most important thing. So as a marker, they want you to show that obviously you have learned something from the course and that you have a good understanding of it. You probably want to show a more nuanced understanding so you know about the relevant details of the topic rather than just a more generic understanding. Okay. So, all of the other issues um, also relate to understanding because, for example, when you write, you want to make sure you write things that are relevant to the essay topic or to the thing that you're trying to argue for. Okay. So if you were to have a really good understanding of something outside the course, um, that may be relevant, uh, but if it isn't, then you haven't really demonstrated that you know the information relevant to the course. So you want to always make sure when you write, the thing that you are demonstrating your understanding about is the course material rather than some other topic uh, that you learned somewhere else. And clarity in writing is essential for the person reading your essay to be able to assess your understanding. So it's just um, unfortunate that if you have a really good understanding of the topic, and you know you understand this topic well, but let's say you run out of time and you write it very quickly, maybe the writing is so unclear that your understanding has not been clearly demonstrated. So you want to be very careful that you write clearly. Um, also, and concisely, make sure that the argument um, fits in the word count. Um, Arguing is very important in philosophy. So sometimes you might be asked to, in a, a short um, assignment, to just explain something. So explain uh, what this philosopher's view is on this topic. But almost all the time, argumentation is going to be relevant to what you are writing. So you are going to want to not just say, what did this philosopher think? You also want to think, why did they think that? What reasons did they give for thinking that? So never just say what they think, say why. And in other times, you want to give your own arguments. So you want to show why you think that this other person is right or that this other person is wrong, um, depending on what your view is. So don't just state what you think. Always argue for what you think. And in a uh, philosophy writing, clearly um, understanding is the most important thing, but a really good essay is going to have a little bit of originality in it. Okay. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to solve the, a new problem in philosophy or you know, it, you know, come up with something completely different, um, but originality could be um, coming up with your own example, or explaining something in your own way, or giving your own perspective on something and giving your own argument for something, or reinterpreting someone else's argument. So originality can be uh, done in several different ways. Writing in philosophy um, is supposed to help you develop your understanding of the topic and give you enough time to uh, carefully analyze um, uh, an argument or a text and demonstrate that you can take on further research research and to reflect on a topic. So when you're reading a, um, uh, uh, something written by somebody else, um, you always want to do so in a reflective way. You want to not just try to memorize what is said in the text, but also try to think about whether you agree with their argument, whether you disagree, and why 
But then when you write your own essay, that gives you the opportunity to really rethink and reflect in more detail. So as you write an essay, make sure you do it in your own words. So it would be much easier just to um, say, hey, this philosopher thinks this, and to copy and paste what they think into a text. Unfortunately, that doesn't really demonstrate that you understand what they say. That just demonstrates that you could copy and paste the text. What you want to do is you want to read the text, think about it, and then think, how would I explain that in my own words? And then write it in your own words. Okay. You might occasionally use a quote, but mostly you want to demonstrate that you understand it using your own words. If you want to use a quote, make sure that the quote is in quotation marks. Um, and avoid what I refer to as semi-quoting. You never want to just change a few words in what someone else says um, because you don't really demonstrate that you have learned the material. And if you have any um, uh, cheat detection software, that is going to show up in the detection software. So make sure you never change the words in a quote. Make sure you read it, you think about it, and then you write it in your own words. Okay. So. If you are given a essay topic to do, usually you're given a choice of topics. So a difficult thing to do is to cho choose, choose which topic you want to use. So there are any different ways, many different ways you can choose a topic. You could pick one out of a hat if you wanted to. Um, but a better way to do it is to maybe think about, out of these topics, which one do you understand the best? Um, which one do you have a clear point of view on? Um, which one do you find the most interesting? Um, maybe which one are you most prepared to talk about? Which one do you have the most opinions on? Okay. So it's not always the best idea just to choose a topic that you think is the easiest topic. Um, although you can do that, of course, that might be one of your motivations. But sometimes you might write a better essay if you choose a topic that you find maybe a little bit more challenging, but also more interesting. So those are some ways you can think about choosing your topic. Doing research can mean different things depending on what the assignment is. So doing research in philosophy might just mean reading the course material. So in every course, there are a few different readings uh, which are recommended or required for you to read. And that is part of your research. Some essays don't require you to do any more research than to deeply and um, in-depth do a reading of the required readings and to comment on them. So you want to make sure you have thought carefully and critically about those recommended articles before you um, look to outside sources. Um, sometimes you're required to do your own um, outside source research. Um, and that is going to test whether or not you understand how to use uh, search engines, how to use a library, um, and how to find relevant sources uh, for the text. Make sure wherever you use sources outside the recommended texts that they're relevant. You don't want to try to impress anybody by, let's say, having a really long bibliography because probably you're not going to get any extra marks for that. And you might lose marks if you reference a bunch of things that turn out to be irrelevant because that shows that you didn't do the research um, properly. Okay. So after you've done your, some reading and you have an idea about what you want to talk about, then you should start thinking about the structure of the essay. The structure of a philosophical essay is probably more simplistic than um, the structure of essays in other fields, where you have multiple different sections, methodologies, and that kind of thing. Philosophy essays usually only have three things, an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. And those will always serve the same purposes. So an introduction simply summarizes where the essay is going, the body says all your arguments, and then the conclusion sums up your findings. You don't want to, for example, have things like definitions in your intro. And you don't want to talk too much about um, irrelevant details. So 
unless the essay is about um, the history of a, an individual, usually a philosophy essay is going to be more about a person's ideas rather than the person themselves. So you want to avoid saying things like, this philosopher is a very well-known historical figure, and they were born in this year, and they had this great life, and they did so much great stuff, or they were a terrible person. <laughs> um, so those details usually aren't relevant to the essay. What you do want to talk about is, according to this philosopher, this theory is the right one, and they give these reasons in support of that theory. So focus on their arguments, not on the details about historical facts or their life. So the purpose of an introduction is to tell the reader what the article is about. Here's one way of thinking about it. If you were doing a lot of research and you wanted to work out which papers were relevant for you to read to do your research, you could look at the introduction to get an idea about what the paper was about. So the paper is supposed to inform somebody whether this article is going to be relevant to their research. So you should think about that when you write your introduction. What information does a person need to know if they were choosing whether or not to read this paper? So generally, you're going to talk about the, the, what topic you're going to be discussing. You might talk about which theories are relevant to the topic. Um, if, you are dis um, if you are basing your assignment on a question, you might say how you're going to answer each part of the question, and then give a little bit of an introduction as to which kind of arguments or viewpoints you're going to be putting forward. So obviously, these are not going to be the full details. The introduction should be nice and concise, and just give the reader a little bit of detail about what's in the paper. You don't want to start the argumentation in the um, introduction. Similarly, you don't want to introduce any new argumentation in the conclusion. The conclusion simply sums up what you have found. In other words, you should think about if um, the reader has gotten to the end of the article and they need a reminder about what they just read, um, the conclusion should remind them about what the main points from the essay, the main findings were. What was your conclusion? The structure, other than intro um, body and conclusion, you have a lot of different kind of options as to how you structure the body of your essay. You want to think carefully about essay structure in terms of um, whether the uh, structure makes sense. So does this paragraph make sense following from the previous paragraph? You don't want to jump around between topics and leave the reader confused. Um, you want to think also about um, even uh, the structure within the paragraph and structures within sentences. Uh, you might want to avoid something called a run-on sentence, in which the sentence goes too long, and by the end of the sentence, the person reading it has forgotten what happened at the beginning of the sentence. Okay, so try to keep your sentences short and concise. Try to make the, um, the different topics relevant to each other and have a nice flow. What you could do if you wanted to was have um, subtopics within the essay um, and uh, saying where you want, like, here I'm going to talk, you know, this, these paragraphs are about this topic and these paragraphs about these topics. But make sure um, you always read the assignment description, um, as that may not, may not be allowed in some essays. Okay, so shorter sentences are better, shorter paragraphs are also better in general, and uh, clarity is key. One way you might want to structure an essay in the body of an essay is to have um, all of the background first and all of the arguments at the end. Uh, but that's not the only way to do it. You could also have um, um, a background and then argument, background, argument, background, argument. So both of those structures could work. Um, it's up to you to choose what you think is better for your own essay. Okay. So um, one way you might want to structure essay is something like this. So you have your introduction, as I explained before. Then you might want to explain some key terms, although you could do that throughout the essay where the key term becomes relevant. 
then you might want to talk about the main theories, describe, explain it, um, show some nuance and understanding that you really get the details of the theory, especially those details that are relevant to what you're going to say next. Might, maybe, you might give some examples or thought experiments um, where relevant. So thought experiments uh, being examples which um, are supposed to show um, intuitive, intuitive appeal to a certain position. Okay, so after you describe all the relevant theory, you can then talk about your own views and maybe give some counter arguments. Okay, so you might uh, give um, a competing view and then say why that is com competing view is wrong. You might give a second competing view and say why it is wrong. You might give objections to your own views, respond to the objection, and conclude that your view is the best view because of the reasoning you gave. Here are some things to avoid in your philosophical writing. Try to avoid generic sentences that don't um, make any um, progress to your argument, such as things like, since the dawn of time, humans have pondered these deep, meaningful topics. I refer to these as empty sentences. Empty sentences don't actually give any um, relevant um, details or argumentation. Avoid saying things like there's a lot of disagreement on this, this issue, or things like this is a puzzling topic. And if it's a longer, even if it's a longer essay, make every sentence count. So maybe you're like me and you find it hard keeping within the word count. If that's the case, make sure that you don't go on tangents or give empty sentences throughout. You can usually make a essay a lot shorter and better written just by tightening up the, the, the argumentation and getting rid of the empty sentences. Philosophical, uh, philosophy writing is not novel writing. So a good thing to do in a novel is to have suspense and to have the uh, reader not know where it's going next and then they get surprised. Oh, I didn't know that he would be the murderer. That's bad in a philosophy essay. You want the reader to know what you're going to argue. That may sound boring, uh, but you don't want the reader to read halfway through your essay and then be surprised by the conclusion, because if they're surprised, perhaps you haven't argued for it very well. So make sure every step of the way they know where the argument is going. Um, don't try to focus on opinions. Try to focus instead on arguments. And a little tip is to use the first person pronoun. When you're giving your argument, say, this is my view, or I think this. I argue X is true because of reasons Y and Z. Try to avoid just giving a theory or opinion of someone else. Always say why somebody thinks that. Um, for example, this philosopher makes the following claim, and his arguments are as follows. You want to avoid saying something like, so in conclusion, we have some reasons to think view A is right and some re reasons to think view B is right, but I don't know which one is right. Okay. Maybe it's true that you don't know which one is right, but you want to argue for a particular position and try to give a good argument. So avoid sitting on the fence. Okay. And avoid trying to say that you've done more than you've actually done. So in the conclusion, you might say something like, I have given some evidence in support of this theory. Um, maybe you haven't managed to show beyond a shadow of a doubt that the other theory is false. So don't say that this theory is, no, you know, no one should believe this other theory if you haven't managed to actually do that. So make sure you're um, honest about what you have achieved with your paper. And don't try to say everything about everything. Um, the essay is only a certain length. Um, it's better to go in a bit of detail about each topic rather than just trying to mention everything that everyone has said about it. So pick your battles, uh, be choosy about which topics you decide to talk about, and be clear in the intro uh, which your focus is. Try to avoid going into tangents. And you're not trying to prove that you've done the readings, but you're trying to prove that you understand the topic and that you know what is relevant and what is not relevant to making an argument. Okay. 
writing clearly is essential for doing a good essay. Even if you are the, the future genius philosopher of the century, um, if you can't write clearly, um, you won't get a good mark for this essay. And you might argue that, historically speaking, philosophers tend to write unclearly. Um, unfortunately, when you're writing an essay, we require that you write clearly. Um, because there's, we don't have, for example, if you're doing a thesis on an ancient philosopher, you might spend years reading their work to try to work out what it means. Um, your marker is not going to be spending years reading your essay. So do multiple edits. Always make sure your spelling and grammar and sentence structure is as clear as possible. Um, make sure when you argue, you give a clear position and you give the best reasons you can think in support of that position. Knowing the difference between good arguments and bad arguments is going to be key here. Because if you, for example, state every possible reason why anybody might support of you, and you know, you're not clear about which counts as the good arguments and which counts as the bad arguments, that shows that you haven't developed your critical thinking skills. So make sure you try to give the best reasons possible in support of your view. Um, and you never say that we should think this because of um, a weak reason. You don't want to show that you don't know the difference between good and bad arguments. Don't assume that the person um, reading your assignment knows and has read everything that you've read. So make sure you present a topic as if it's to somebody who's intelligent but hasn't necessarily read the same things that you've read. When you quote, do it sparingly and do it clearly using quotation marks and references. Never replace your own writing with quotes. So even if you do a quote um, showing what somebody's view is, make sure you then explain that quote in your own words to demonstrate that you understand what the quote means. And try to avoid reproducing your lecture notes. So in some classes, the lecturer might provide slides uh, for you to w help you with your understanding, but you never want to use those slides in your essays. The slides are supposed to help you with understanding, but they're not supposed to be um, a text that you follow when you write the essay. You want to show that you've done your own original thinking. Always write in your own words unless you're quoting somebody. Um, for longer passages, try to avoid longer quotes, but if you have a long essay, you might have an indented quote that's a little bit longer. Make sure you always reference. If you paraphrase material or write something in your own words, make sure you reference where the ideas come from. So if you read a philosopher and then you say, there's this argument that I write in my own words, make sure you say whose argument the original argument was and always try to explain in your own words. Never simply modify what somebody else has said and claim um, it's your own original work. Thank you for listening.